The School Bus, Part 1 James, a large man with a thick mustache, has been the school's bus driver for 20 long years. He's driven eager-eyed kids to school for their very first day, and he's seen the same excited kids rush off the bus on their last day of elementary school. James thinks he's seen it all, but today will be a day like no day before it. The sun's beating down mercilessly on the loud yellow school bus as it puffs its way up a hill to a sporting event. Thirty-six restless children are screaming and squirming in the back. Glancing in the direction of his side mirror, James notices thick black smoke coming from the rear of the bus. The bus is catching on fire, James says in a surreal flash of disbelief. James can feel his heart racing in his chest. Trying to stay calm, he slows the bus down and stops by the side of the road. Why have we stopped, inquired Mrs. Mandane. Get these kids off the bus. It's on fire, James says with urgency in his voice, while struggling to keep a calm demeanor so as not to panic his young passengers. Okay, boys and girls, I want you to get off the bus as quickly as you can. Leave your bags. Trying to keep order, Mrs. Mandane hurries the 36 children out of the bus. Okay, everyone, over here. Come stand here with me. A far more composed James says, making sure the children are a safe distance from the bus. How did this happen so quickly, James wonders to himself, standing with the children in an oddly serene patch of long green grass next to the road and away from the busy street. But what James does not know is that the worst is yet to come. A shocked group of primary school children watch in disbelief as their school bus burns with an evil intensity. For the first time in 20 years, James looks around, witnessing a group of 36 primary school children in a dead silence. James shakes his head out of its daze, lifting his eyes to the reality of the burning bus with its thick black smoke, a sharp contrast to the intense blue sky. To their utter amazement, a bright red fire engine passes by. Stop, stop, Mrs. Mandane shouts beside herself. The driver of the fire engine, seeing the commotion, makes a U-turn and speeds to the aid of the bus. Suddenly, more flames burst from the underside of the bus. The firemen jump out. One attends to the taps, the other two attend to the hose. Within a minute, and what felt like a second, the taps are opened and masses of water rush out to meet the inferno. Suddenly, in a terrifying moment of disbelief, the unimaginable happens. The fire engine inches forward. At first, the movement is so slow that nobody notices, but this quickly develops into a steady motion. The massive fire truck, intended to provide relief and save lives, turns into a charging bull. The children scream in horror. The driverless fire engine is upon them. James slowly opens his tired eyes, the rays of the sun glaring through his eyelashes. He becomes aware of the distant sound of a calm breeze blowing through the long grass. Was it a dream, James wonders? Did I faint? Reality flows back. The sound of whimpering children replaces the tranquility of the summer breeze. James struggles but manages to sit upright in time to witness the horrific aftermath of a routine bus ride gone terribly wrong. Three children lie motionless, killed instantly by the fire engine's massive wheels. Three are seriously injured, and another two sustained less serious injuries. The driver of the fire engine, in his eagerness to contain the fire, had forgotten to apply the handbrake.